CBR presents the unmade sequel, answering the would've, could've, and should've of scrapped superhero follow-ups. Hugh Jackman donned the claws for Wolverine nine times. Three times for the original trilogy, where he was definitely the star. Three times for his own solo movies, where he was definitely, definitely the star. And then three times in the new X-Men trilogy, where he was definitely only the star of one of them, with cameos in the other two. That's a lot of Wolverine. But what if I told you that there were a few other Wolverine projects over the last few decades in development that never got off the ground? What would those look like if they were made today? See if that works. How would things look if they were made back then? Would we have a new Wolverine already in the MCU? The answer, like Logan's memory, is a little complicated. All right, you've piqued my interest. What do you want? Let's begin. When I set out to explore the makings of unmade sequels, I thought Wolverine would be a perfect choice for an early episode. Thanks to Hugh Jackman's pitch-perfect performance, Wolverine has become one of the most well-known modern superheroes, at least to general audiences. Comic fans always knew that Wolverine was a special kind of superhero, and it's been great seeing how well his live-action adaptation has followed the comics. I mean, sure, Hugh Jackman is 6'3", and the Wolverine character is more known for being a burly little guy standing at 5'3", but if that's the only complaint, then I'm fine with it. Man, can you imagine a 5'3 Hugh Jackman? Nope, that thought will haunt my nightmares. Get that out of here. Anyways, Wolverine has been a staple of superhero cinema since the Marvel superhero genre's big boom in the early 2000s. I think it's not too much of a stretch to say if Wolverine and the first X-Men movie wasn't a success, then everything would look vastly different right now, so thanks, Wolvie. But because of the character's popularity, it shouldn't be a surprise to know just how many Wolverine sequels have been in development. This video is going to explore the time before the original X-Men trilogy, then the transition to solo Wolverine projects, then some pretty wild Wolverine concept films, and then finally what Wolverine's future holds for the MCU. So how did we get Wolverine front and center in the original X-Men movie? Well, by doing some digging, it seems like one of the primary reasons Wolverine is the face of the franchise is because because of budget cuts. Yeah, that's not super exciting, but it is fascinating. Let me explain. Throughout the 90s, a few X-Men scripts were drafted and floated around with a renewed interest in making a live action film, thanks to the success of X-Men the Animated Series. Theme music time. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, it's, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. Now, it seems like whoever was writing a script for the X-Men at that time tried to have a ton of characters involved. Like, the main script that was in development right after Fox bought the rights for the characters did focus on Professor X recruiting Wolverine into the X-Men, like the movie we all know, but there were just more mutants walking around X Mansion. Cyclops and Jean Grey were there, but Storm wasn't around yet, and instead we got more OG members like Iceman, Beast, and Angel. The script also included an expanded Brotherhood of Mutants, which had Magneto, Sabretooth, Toad, Juggernaut, and Blob. Did you just call me... Blob? Also having the Bolivar Trask create his Sentinels to attack the X-Men plotline. Jeez, that's a lot of characters for a first movie. The next big draft of the movie lays the groundwork for what the film would become, but it goes in some interesting directions. Michael Chabon wrote the draft in like 1996, and the story would have seen Logan attacked and on the run from soldiers before being picked up by the X-Men. While simultaneously in California, the mutant Jubilee would discover that she has mutant abilities and that her her whole life has been a lie, with her parents not being her real parents. Once she gets involved with the X-Men, she and Logan start to develop a deep friendship as they try to figure out their past. The X-Men lineup would have consisted of Cyclops, Jean Grey, Iceman, Storm, Beast, Nightcrawler, with Wolverine and Jubilee joining up at the end. With Jubilee front and center, you can tell how much inspiration this draft took from the animated series. What's kind of a fun detail though, is that this draft didn't have Magneto as the main villain. Then Brian Singer came on board and the studio wanted to save some money. Yeah, everyone wants a big X-Men movie until they realize they need to spend X-Men money. I'll summarize the important points. Big name writers were brought in to provide their input and rewrites, including Joss Whedon and Christopher McQuarrie, and then an overhaul happened. Probably one of the biggest being that Singer and his team switched Jubilee to Rogue and put a heavy emphasis on the Professor X-Magneto relationship. Budget cuts required characters to be given the boots, so 
goodbye Nightcrawler and Beast from the main team. Which, another fun fact, Beast is usually like, you know, the doctor on the team. So when he was cut from the script, the medical stuff was given to Jean Grey. But throughout it all, it seems like every draft kept the core idea of Wolverine being new to the X-Men and helping a young girl. Hey, I really just thought of something while working on this project. Wolverine begins his journey in live action by protecting a young girl in the first X-Men movie, and then he ends his journey in the Logan movie by protecting a young girl. That's a fun connection. I'll admit I feel pretty silly not realizing that thematic parallel sooner. So fast forward a bit to our solo Wolverine era. Around the time of X-Men The Last Stand, the idea was put forward that they would make solo films for their popular characters. X-Men Origins Magneto was actually in development first as early as 2004. Things got pushed around a lot in X-Men Origins, Wolverine was made the priority instead. And then a few things happened that affected the future. Mainly, X-Men First Class was put into production for a variety of different reasons, and it told a huge part of Magneto's backstory. And the Origins Magneto film was cancelled. Origins Wolverine, although not critically beloved by any means, was a pretty big box office success, and a sequel was announced just a few days after the film's opening. And honestly, reading up on it, I do think having such a passionate advocate for the character like Hugh Jackman is a factor into why the Wolverine sequel happened. I think that's another reason why we've come to love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine so much. The dude obviously understands and cares about the character deeply, which isn't always true of superhero actors. Like, yes, Robert Downey Jr. was born to play Tony Stark, but if I asked you who seems more likely to be knowledgeable about their character's deep comic history between Jackman and RDJ, then I would say the smart money's on Jackman, right? Either way, Jackman at that time had cemented Wolverine as a character with more stories to tell, and some of those became movies. But what about the sequels that you've never heard about? Let's talk about those. So when it comes to Wolverine, there are a lot of projects and sequels that were in development at one point or the other that just didn't happen. I'm going to name a few of them and speculate what they would have looked like, and you tell me which one sounds the most interesting to you, okay? We had a deal. Alright, first up, James Cameron and Catherine Bigelow's X-Men. That's right, in the 90s, before all the hullabaloo I mentioned, James Cameron and his production team were hard at work on an X-Men adaptation. Yes, this isn't technically a sequel, it's more of like the first movie, but it's James Cameron, I had to mention it. The idea of a James Cameron at Catherine Bigelow superhero film is almost too much to handle. If this did work out, then I think the entire landscape of superhero movies might be different. Maybe this is just a wishful thinking, but if this was made in the 90s, then possibly James Cameron today would be known as the godfather of a larger cinematic universe like Kevin Feige, only built out of Cameron's ideas instead. Imagine that for a moment. Or, you know, the other option is James Cameron would have made one of these movies and then pieced out to Pandora. But still, the idea is fascinating. There even was some dream casting for this project with Angela Bassett playing Storm and Bob Hoskins playing Wolverine. The Bob Hoskins part is why I'm mentioning this movie, really. Bob Hoskins arguably fits the look of the character perfectly, so this might have been slam dunk casting, but we never got to see it. You know why? Spider-Man! Cue the J. Jonah Jameson voice, Spider-Man! Spider-Man! I knew you two were in this together! I yeah, that's right. During the development of this film, producers offered Cameron the chance to make a Spider-Man movie instead, and that immediately got Cameron way more interested, so he dropped the X-Men movie like a hot potato. Fast forward to post-OG X-Men trilogy, and we got ourselves an epic potential Wolverine movie that never happened. So if it's not obvious by now, Fox is kind of all over the place with their movies. They clearly did not have one guiding voice like Kevin Feige to shape their entire universe. They basically were just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what would stick. That's the basis for the X-Men vs. Fantastic Four movie that was put into development around 2010. It basically would have been Fox's version of Civil War, with the Superhero Registration Act pitting the Fantastic Four against the X-Men. Not much is known about the plot besides basics, but one thing that has been revealed is that in one of the big fights, Wolverine would fight Mr. Fantastic, and Mr. Fantastic would pin Wolverine down, stretch his hands so that they were one molecule wide, and then use that to slice Wolverine's arms off. Ouch! It never mentioned if Hugh Jackman would have been Wolverine, but come on, he totally would have been. The success of First Class cancelled this project, and I can't honestly tell if that's a good or bad thing. On one hand, it would have been great to see this adaptation and seeing new versions of the Fantastic Four fighting the X-Men. On the other hand, if Fox did this, then who knows if we would have ever gotten Captain America Civil War, and if Wolverine would have continued with his normal standalone sequels. The last of which, Logan, 
Dragon is one of the greatest finales for a character ever. Let's jump to one of the more promising sequels that almost did happen and would have represented the passing of the torch for a new Wolverine. So after First Class jump-started the new X-Men franchise and essentially buried all other in-development sequels like the Origins franchise and the X-Men vs. Fantastic Four project, it seemed like First Class director Matthew Vaughn and the studio had a clear path forward, but not so fast. Days of Future Past came out next and is widely regarded as one of the better superhero movies. Great, right? Well, no, because it was followed by the lackluster X-Men Apocalypse and then Dark Phoenix effectively drove the X-Men franchise right off a cliff in a fiery explosion of hot garbage. But that wasn't always the plan. You see, Matthew Vaughn actually wanted to end his trilogy with Days of Future Past. His second movie would have been a Wolverine-centric movie set in the 70s and had a new actor playing the character. Vaughn name-drops Tom Hardy as the ideal choice for the new Wolverine at that time. The third movie would have been Days of Future Past that would have united Hugh Jackman with the new version of the character and effectively passed the torch in an epic story. So what changed? The studio looked at the Days of Future Past project and was like, let's just do that now. So they ignored Vaughn's plan and that's why Vaughn didn't continue with the franchise. Who do you side with here? I mean, yeah, the Days of Future Past movie is fantastic, but Vaughn was right in that the story had nowhere really interesting to go afterwards. And if they had followed Vaughn's plan, we might not constantly be speculating on who's going to be the Wolverine in the MCU. Man, there's such an interesting universe out there in the multiverse that shows what would have happened if this was the path we took. But all of it just keeps coming back to Wolverine and the desire to mold of franchises around him. He's that much fun to watch. So now it's time to ask the big question. What if we could get a Wolverine sequel today? If that did happen, should it be set outside the MCU continuing the old story, be a complete reboot, or tie into the MCU itself? And I think that's a pretty easy answer this time around. As much as solo Wolverine movies have ranged from bad to pretty good to mind-blowingly amazing, it's time we get the character into the MCU. In fact, Wolverine in the MCU is perhaps the only option that solves both the character's baggage and helps reshape the MCU after a less than stellar last few projects. Yes, okay, it's worth noting that I know that Hugh Jackman is coming back for Deadpool 3, but as much as we all want it, he's more than likely not going to stick around for the MCU long term. I'll talk about that movie in a second, but what's the best long term plan for the character? Well, here's why I think it works out great for everyone introducing Wolverine as a new central character for the MCU. I think giving Wolverine another solo movie would just draw too much many comparisons to Hugh Jackman's movies, and that's something that should be avoided. So they should introduce him in a way that includes popular MCU characters as a way to get him acclimated to this new world. I did a video pretty recently for CBR explaining that Wolverine should fight the Hulk in a Hulk vs. Wolverine movie first because that immediately establishes the new Wolverine as someone you don't mess with, and also lets him interact with characters he hasn't interacted with in live action yet. I imagine the pitch is something like Hulk or Scar is on a rampage, and Wolverine is either recruited by President Ross to take him down, or he's living in isolation, and Hulk or Scar disrupts his peaceful life, and it sets off a chain reaction forcing the two of them to fight. Then afterwards, Wolverine can be the perfect connecting tissue between the Avengers and the X-Men, allowing both teams to be separate but still have some crossover. Heck, I mean, in this Wolverine vs. Hulk movie, you could have flashbacks to some time in the 70s and honor Matthew Vaughn's original idea for a solo Wolverine movie. That sounds pretty cool. I think this is not only great for Wolverine, but also for the MCU, which in my opinion is in need of a soft reboot. I'm of the mindset that Phase 5 and Phase 6 should have had more of an emphasis on just the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, allowing a whole new side of the MCU to be built up to not tire out the audiences on like Ant-Man or Thor. Although they didn't do that, there's still plenty of time to pivot and make Wolverine one of the new leading phases of the franchise by giving him a new sequel. Let's end this by returning once again to Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. As I mentioned in how we all know by now, he's returning to co-star in Deadpool 3. And that's, uh, okay, honestly, a little tough for me to wrap my head around. To me, this has everything working against it. It's not that I can't turn my brain off and understand that this is just a fun one-off adventure. I promise I can do that pretty easily. And this news doesn't affect my enjoyment of Logan as the character's perfect final send-off. Though if it 
bothers you, I understand that. No, my issue with it is this feels more like a Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are friends and want to hang out type of project rather than a Deadpool and Wolverine have an amazing history in the comics scenario. Because to me, if Hugh Jackman plays his character exactly how he did, then we're going to get Deadpool paired with a gruff, no-nonsense, serious soldier of a man. And that's great, but we literally just saw that in Deadpool 2 with Cable. What is going to make this movie different? I would have been more excited to hear of a Deadpool and Spider-Man movie because the two have such amazing comic adventures. But this just feels a little weird to me. But hey, maybe I shouldn't judge. This whole video exploring the history of Wolverine has proven one thing above all else, and that's Wolverine fits in a lot of different places. No matter how wonky an X-Men script is, as long as they keep Wolverine a constant presence, then he usually turns out pretty fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you finished? How easy will it be for you to accept a new actor as Wolverine? Do you think that's best for the character, or do you think the MCU should drop a mountain of cash at Hugh Jackman's feet to return? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching Unmade Sequel on CBR. If you liked it, please, please let me know. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.